Well, good morning, Noonday. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. If you're joining us online, welcome. Why don't we stand and let's sing. Though the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Where there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in this heart, I will praise you. With glory, Lord of light, I feel alive with you. In your presence now I come alive, I am alive with you. There is strength when I say. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you this morning. You may be seated. Glad that you're here this morning. Welcome to Noonday. If this is your first time with us. We want you to know that you are special to us. If it's been a while that you've been here, well, you're special to us as well. And we're just delighted that you've come. We want to welcome those who are watching by internet as well today. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's our prayer the Lord will bless you as we've come together to worship the Lord. Welcome to everyone. And we are certainly Glad you're here. May the joy of the Lord be your strength today. Got a couple of announcements for you this morning that you need to be aware of. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to all of our men uh, who came out yesterday and to Kerry Jenkins who helped clean out the spotter barn by the baseball field. I'm telling you, that was quite a project. And our men and our deacons and our men of valor, they worked hard uh, in getting it all completed. And it's clean. And it's not been clean uh, for 40 years, uh, but it's clean now, and uh, we ran all the rats, and I'm just, there, it was clean, thank goodness, but uh, thank you so much for your hard work and effort, we couldn't have done it without you, we are not finished with the project, it's, it's become a bigger project, and the fact that our dumpster didn't show up uh, to its right location, it's over here, 
uh, and it needs to be over there. So they're going to be moving that this weekend. So this coming Saturday, we're going to be meeting at 9 o'clock to put the stuff we got outside of the spider barn in the dumpster. So if you can help all men, women, boys, and girls, we would love to have your help. Uh, so all we're doing is just putting in the dumpster and we'll be finished. So I appreciate your help if you can help us there. You noticed in your bulletin today, it's called Five for Five. I'm asking you to write down and to pray for five individuals that do not go to our church that you are willing to pray for and to make contact with to get them here by Easter. And uh, they need to be here. We need them here. So please make that a matter of prayer today. Also, uh, this week is the last week to sign up for Noonday Baseball. If your child ages 4 through 12 would like to participate in Noonday Baseball, they need to sign up this week, and you can go online and do that at noondaybaseball.org, and we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, we got an exciting event coming up with our Men of Valor uh, on March the 7th at 4.30 in the Family Life Center. We have uh, the outstanding, I'm telling you, he's outstanding, coach at Kill High School Football. Mr. Brett Sloan is going to be our guest speaker, and we're going to be having a time of of corn dogs and good food and fellowship, 430. You want to be there as we're going to be talking about successes and trials and tribulations in ministry. And uh, we're going to look forward to hearing Brett uh, share his testimony with us. And uh, also, I want to encourage you to uh, be part of our women's Bible study. If you haven't uh, signed up for Elijah, uh, it's Priscilla Shire who's teaching that. And it's on March the 4th on Thursday. Ladies, sign up, be a part of that you uh, will be blessed to do so. Uh, there are other announcements that you need to be aware of in our bulletin. Please read it over, and uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me or one of our deacons. But so glad to see you here in the Lord's house. Let's uh, worship by praying and continuing to lift him up as Brother Zach comes. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day you've given unto us and the, for this opportunity that we have to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I ask today, God, that you would just rain down on this place, and I pray, Lord, that your mighty hand would just uh, touch each one of our hearts as we're looking for purpose and direction in our life. We know, Lord, that you are the way uh, to finding great fulfillment and uh, finding our eternal purpose. Lord, bless this time of worship. Bless those that come this morning. And Lord, may you be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As Pastor Mark said, we're so glad that you're here to worship with us today. Why don't you stand now with us? creation suddenly articulate with a thousand times to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we hear Christ be magnified The whole earth echoing his evidence, his name would pass from sea to sea, from rivers to the mountain tops. We hear Christ be Right. 
Christ be magnified in me. Be magnified in you. Be magnified in us, Lord. Lord. Let's declare this out this morning, church. And I won't bow to idols, I'll stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice cause you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings, I'll hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, then I'll be crucified with you. Cause death is just a doorway into resurrection life And if I join you in your suffering Then I'll join you when you rise And when you return in glory With all the angels and the saints My heart will still be singing My soul will be the same Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all made Is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the Lamb who died. To ransom the slave, is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? 
Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave he is david's root and the lamb who died to ransom the slave from every people and tribe every nation and tongue oh, he has made us the king the kingdom priest with his son he is worthy is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory is he worthy is he worthy is he worthy of this he Let's sing this hymn out to him this morning. We serve a God who is worthy. A God who is worthy and good. Amen. Amazing love that welcomes me The kindness of mercy That bought with blood, oh, heartedly, my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. So good to me. Behold the cross, the H to me, and the hollow bound. He did erase the sinner's sin.
entered this life bring suffering Lord I will remember what Calvary has brought for me both now and forever so so God, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy and your goodness. Amen. Amen. I will today want to encourage you to turn to the book of Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6 is we're going to be looking at verses 9 through 11 as we continue our study of the book of Revelation. And if you're physically able, if you'll stand in honor of God's word. The Bible says, when he opened the fifth seal... I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness that they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they that were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete who were to be killed as they themselves had been. Dear Heavenly Father, bless the reading of this word. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for our children that are leaving at this time. Lord, we pray, God, that you would soften their heart to the gospel, and Lord, may you just raise them up to be the godly children and leaders that we know they're going to be. Bless Miss Melanie this morning as she leads them. Lord, bless this time together as we study your word as well. I ask, God, that as we enter into this corporate time of worship, God, that... Uh, our hearts will be softened as well to receive your truth and may the truth set us free. I ask God that you'd use me as an imperfect vessel to preach forth your perfect truth and may you be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I don't know if you have seen the movie Infinity War by Marvel or Endgame. You need to watch it. In this passage or in this movie clip, we see Hawkeye who at one moment has his entire family with him as they're having a good Saturday afternoon outing. They're having archery, playing together, going to have a picnic, eating hot dogs. And the next thing you know, his entire family is gone and he's left there by himself. Well, the reason for that is because Thanos, uh, as this movie is fictitious, uh, he's wiped out half of the population. And now... Hawkeye and the rest of the Avengers are going to have to solve the case and beat Thanos and save the world. Well, that picture that Hawkeye is there with his family is a beautiful picture of what John is explaining here in the book of Revelation, where we are now entering into the great tribulation. For we have seen in the first uh, seal that was open that there are four horsemen of the four apocalypse, of the great apocalypse that is coming. There will be a time of great peace. Then there's going to be a time in the second seal, as we learn, a time of war. Then there's going to be a third time of pestilence and tribulation. And then fourthly, there's going to be a time of martyrdom or death. And then we're going to see today as the fifth seal is open, a time of martyrdom. And we're going to be talking about today the silence of the slain, where those who 
have been left behind after the rapture has taken place, the church is gone, and there is just a remnant of people left behind. It will be there that as you and I are gone, that as we leave evidence of ourselves, as we saw Hawkeye's family leaving evidence that they were once present, that there's a time coming of great tribulation for those that are left behind. How can we who are here today uh, understand what's going to take place? Well, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we learn that for those that know Christ as their Lord and Savior, that as we learn, Jesus tells us that there's coming what is called the rapture, where the trumpet will sound and that the clouds will be rolled back as a scroll and that the Lord Jesus Christ and that those who, uh, who have gone before us, that the dead in Christ will rise and that you and I who are still alive will go up and meet Jesus in the air and that we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye and we will be there celebrating and praising the Lord and we will go back to heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the rapture of the church and oh, what a glorious day that's going to be for you and I. However, there are going to be those who are left behind, and as they're left behind, we have to leave evidence for them to be able to have an opportunity to come to know the Lord as their Savior. For you see, the Holy Spirit will still be present here on the earth. We may be gone, Jesus in the flesh may be gone, but yet the Holy Spirit is present so that those who turn from their wicked ways and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. As Romans 10, 9 says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we can be saved. And there will be those that will be saved during those days. And as we learn in this passage of Scripture today, we learn of the slain who will break their silence. In chapter 7 of Revelation, you'll see that there's 144,000 of those who are slain. They are called martyrs. We learn that they are those that have given their life for the Lord. Now, this has happened after the church is gone. There is the remains of you and I being here, and they will look to the truth for the truth to set them free. What truth are they going to be looking for? They're going to be looking for the Bible. You know, I have a Bible here today that is very important to me. It's very, very old. It belonged to my great, great grandfather. And uh, it, it's, it was his Bible. He said, I, I hear you, but is there evidence of that? Y yes, there is, because uh, his, his name is here in the, in the cover. But the cover, as you can tell, is falling apart. And uh, it, Mr., uh, my uh, grandfather, Stancil, this was his Bible. And inside, uh, one of the, of the uh, favorite verses that he had was John three sixteen. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And he took a piece of the bulletin that he uh, was a member of the church in South Carolina, and he still has it marked there today. And you know what? If I smell my, this Bible, it still smells like him. It's really awesome. And I just love the, the leather cover. And it's still, you know, it's very meaningful to me because it was his Bible. There was evidence of his being on this earth, but yet you don't see him because he's died and gone on. How are we going to leave evidence for those that uh, go after us? Well, I would encourage you to buy all the Bibles you can and leave them in your home for those that do not know the Lord, because after you're gone, we've got to leave evidence for them to know the Lord. They will know from your witness as well. We learn in this passage of Scripture that there are 144,000 witnesses that will come to know the Lord after you and I are gone. These 144,000 witnesses are Jews, Jewish believers, and we learn that they will become uh, evangelists. And the scriptures point out here that their eyes, pointing back to Matthew 24 on the Olivet Discord, where Jesus said there that there's coming a time of wars and rumors of war. There's coming a time of great tribulation and that there will be a raised up a remnant. That's this 144,000 Jewish uh, preachers that are going to go to the ends of the word or of the world and to preach and to teach the gospel. And we have people that are beautiful within our world, uh, organizations like the Wycliffe Bible Translators, who have translated the Bible in so many different languages, and as well, uh, Lifeway, uh, and there are other uh, conservative uh, groups that have translated the Bible in many different languages. And as we distribute them, 
these Jewish pastor preachers are going to share the gospel and that those people who have never heard, their hearts are going to be softened and that they will be a remnant of people that will come after uh, you and I who will be saved. And it will be up to these 144,000 Jewish believers uh, to preach the gospel. We learn from this passage of scripture, though, as we learned last week, that there is the Antichrist. Who, will, who is the false Christ, who will come on a white horse, who will come with a time of peace as he comes with a bow with no arrows, um, as we learned earlier. But yet then there'll be a time of war, then there'll be a time of pestilence, then there'll be a time of death. And for those 144,000 preachers who are going to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, turn to the Lord Jesus today and be saved, that they will be infuriating the Antichrist and that they will cause him as well as his workers to take their life and that they will be slain for the Lord Jesus Christ. They will be martyrs for Christ. And we should not be surprised because if you, as you look in Acts chapter 7, you see that there was a man named Stephen who preached the gospel and preached it faithfully. And he infuriated the, the workers, the leaders there, and they took his life. They stoned him to death. And Stephen said on his last words, you know, uh, Lord, please don't hold this against them, uh, which were the same words that Jesus gave uh, before he died on the cross. We learn that there are other martyrs. There were Jews after Stephen that came to know Christ as our Lord and Savior. They too were slain. We, uh, we know that uh, as well that um, there were the Jews through the days of Hitler in 1930, that Hitler's goal was to wipe out the Jews of the day. And we learned that he was successful in taking many uh, Jews' life. As my heart breaks to even talk about that, because I, I have compassion and love for the Jewish people, because we should all love the Jewish people, because that's the descendants of Jesus. And it's our prayer, as we know, that as the book of Revelation points out, that there's coming a day when those who are Jewish, Orthodox Jews, that their eyes will be open, and that their this partial blindness that they've had throughout their life, as Matthew points out, will be gone and that they will recognize the Savior and that they will recognize him as Lord and trust him as Lord and Savior. But yet they will die for their faith. And just like the Jews of the past and just like Stephen and others, they will give their life for the glory of God. And we come to this passage here as they open the seal in verse 9. It says, and when they opened the seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain and for the word of God, and for the witness that they had borne. First of all, we can see from this passage of Scripture that there is validity uh, to the slain, the validity of the slain. Look back at the Scripture. Verse 9 says, They opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for their witness. There is validity in those 144,000 Jewish preachers in the fact that they have now already given their life for the Lord. They have preached and they have preached and they have preached, but now the Antichrist and his workers have taken their lives and now they are hidden under the altar of Almighty God. And this is a picture of the altar of the Old Testament system here where when they had someone or an animal sacrificed on the altar there, the uh, Jewish people would, would lay the, the animal on the altar and they would collect its blood and that the blood would be poured out at the end of the altar. And that would show that the sacrifice had been complete and completed. And here in this passage, we see that the blood of the martyrs, that they, they, they were poured out, the blood was at the end of the altar. And it was showing here that their sacrifice was complete, that they had done and fulfilled the call of Christ for their lives. As torturous and as, as terrible and, and as ugly as it was, they fulfilled the call of God for their life. How bad was it? Well, looking back again at the scriptures there, it says, uh, for the souls of the slain, that word slain there, it means to be tortured. It means really, literally to be butchered. What did they go through for the Lord Jesus Christ? They were butchered for the cause of Christ. They were willing to be the sacrifice because they knew of God and having that relationship to Christ was well worth it. So they sacrificed themselves to be a light for the Lord. They were, that's where they get their validity by proving that they are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were prophets in a time when they needed to be 
prophets speaking. You know, we live in a time right now in our lifetime of, of grace and of mercy. Whereas evil people, God allows them to continue to live when they deserve death. And it's not for you and I to judge them, but it's what God allows at this point. We're going through a time of grace and mercy. We are in need of days uh, where we have prophets among us who are willing to preach the gospel and say to those who do not know Christ, you need to turn or burn. You need to understand that there's a better day coming for those that know Christ, but there's a worse day for those who don't know Christ. We are to be that prophet. We're to be that witness. And that is exactly what these 144,000 were. And so we see the validity or the value in what they're sharing because they have been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And because of it, they have given their life for the Lord. Verse 9 says that when they opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain. John, when he looks under the altar here, he sees those 144,000. And as he sees this vision of them, they are asking God, are you a God of vengeance? Doesn't the Bible tell us in the book of Exodus that there is coming a day for those that do not follow you, that you will bring a, a, a vengeance upon those who are enemies of God? How long, O oh Lord, are you going to allow the wicked to continue to live as they're still living, but yet we are passed away. We have died. How long, Lord, are you going to allow them to continue to live and flourish and thrive while we've given our life for the cause of Christ? How long, O oh Lord, are you going to let them live? Have you ever thought that uh, in your own life? Have you ever had that question that you have given as well? Uh, as we go through the hardships of life, and I don't know if you know, but life is hard, is it not? There are days that it's easy. There are other days that are not so easy. But understanding that as we go through hardships, that it's just all part of the process of life. It is all part of God building character and teaching us to be stronger, to persevere. James says in chapter one that we're to consider it all joy when we fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of our faith produces perseverance or endurance. So like, okay, thanks a lot, James. I'm so glad to know that. But understanding that we go through those things because it's all part of God's plan. We must understand that God's got a plan for your life. And though it's hard, there's a greater plan that he has that he wants you to be a witness for him. He wants you to be a light for him, to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors. God wants you to fulfill, uh, find that fulfillment in your life as you live for Christ. But knowing as you do so that you're going to go through highs and lows. You're going to go through bumps and bruises. But through it all, the greater good is for living for Christ. And you're going to find satisfaction in living for Christ. But if you don't live for Christ, you're not going to find that satisfaction. And, if, and in fact, the wrath of God abides on you. And that's why Jesus proved to us as he died on the cross, he showed us that he loved us so much. He was willing to die for you and I to pay the penalty so that we don't have to receive the wrath of God, that we um, receive the forgiveness that God only gives to those who believe in Christ. And Jesus loved you so much, he was willing to die on the cross for you. So that's why we're to turn to Christ today so that we don't have to worry about the wrath of God, but we can look forward to eternal life with God as that day is coming soon. So we need to listen to those that have slain, have been slain. And we need to listen to their valid argument because they have been there. They have gone through the hardship. And as we look at these 144,000 Jewish pastors and preachers, they have exhausted their life for Christ. And now they're wondering how long, how much more are we going to have to go through? And maybe you're here today as well. You have that same question. How long, oh Lord, how long are we going to have to wait? God gives us the answer here in this passage of Scripture as we keep moving through it. In verse 10, they cry out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So we see the validity of the slain. Let's look at the voice of the slain. What are they saying here? What is their voice? The, the, in verse 10, it says, they sang with a loud voice. This is an angelic voice, a bold voice. Whereas if they were living in the church age, as 
uh, Stephen was, they would not have the right to be able to ask this question. For you see, Stephen, as he gave his life for the Lord, as he was preaching the gospel to the, the Jews and the Sadducees and the Pharisees there, they didn't like what he had to say because he said basically to them, it's your fault that Jesus died on the cross. You put him on the cross and it was by your sins and my sins that Christ had to die on the cross, which is absolutely true. They didn't like that message and they stoned him. If John or these 144,000 witnesses were living in the church age, they would not be able to say to Jesus, how long, Lord, are you going to cause us to wait? Because that argument would not be valid there because it wouldn't be respectful. It wouldn't be reverent. It wouldn't be right. But these martyrs, as we see their validity, as they preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, to all these people groups, they have a valid cause to speak this word because we learn here that they are proven to show that they are disciples of Christ. And because they are the disciples of God, they have the opportunity to ask this question because they've given their life and now they're just wondering, Lord, as your word promises in the book of Exodus that vengeance is yours, how long is it going to be before we see vengeance take place? And so that's why we need to hear their voice today. He says, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? We learn the, the word avenge there. It means, again, uh, to return what has happened to them onto someone else. Wouldn't it be nice if you and I could be judge over the earth? Is there anybody that you would like to take care of? I mean, not necessarily take their life, but maybe take care of. And the fact that they've given you a hard time and you'd like to give them a hard time. Or they've been poking at your Christianity and you'd like to poke back at them. Or they have been making fun of you and you'd like to do the same. I'm not saying that it's right. But if you could just have your way for just a moment... Who would that person or those people be? Well, we have to repent of that mindset and that heart set because we all have that desire for somebody. God says to us, we're not to be people of the flesh, but we're to be walking in the spirit. And we're not to be thinking of the things of this world, but we're to put our mind on what's above these things, thinking about whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is noble, whatever is uh, praiseworthy. We're to think on these things, not on negative earthly things. So... As much as we would like to avenge our Christianity here on earth, it's not for us to avenge. We're not to be the judge. We're just to trust God no matter what, knowing that he knows what's best. John points out here that God is sovereign, and, and God is in control, and you need to hear this today. God is in control of your life. You just need to trust him and follow what he says through his word. As you read his word daily, as you pray to him, you will find direction and purpose, and you will find God's plan and you will find fulfillment if you'll fa follow faithfully, as the scripture points out. The voice of the slain here, they question, say, Lord, how long is our blood going to have to be uh, spilled out before you avenge? Well, we learn here that all of the 144,000 uh, are not complete at this moment. And God gives a word here that uh, they're the, the complete story is not over, that there are still some that who will come after these that have already been slain who are under the altar, that they're still preaching, they're still teaching, they're still going to the ends of the earth to share their faith so that other people will come to know Christ of these lost people groups. And so their answer that God gives to them is this, as they hear the voice of the slain, they hear the voice of God that says to them, You've got to rest in me. In other words, you've got to wait on me. Looking back at the, the scripture here in verse 11, it says, And they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete. Uh, they're, they're, in other words, going to have to wait. They've given their life for Christ. They have paid the ultimate price. And as John looks at them under the altar, God says to them with his voice, you've got to wait on my vengeance. It's not coming yet. There's a plan. As they go through the tribulation, there's troubled times. They've gone through silence. Then they've gone through war. Then they've gone through pestilence. Then they're going th they've gone through death. And now they've gone through martyrdom. 
how long, O oh Lord? Jesus says, wait. Now, this morning, some of you are going through hardship. Some of you are going through difficulty. Some of you are going through unexplained times where you would like the answer. And you've prayed about it, but God's not giving you the answer yet. And I believe that he would give you the answer that he gives to John here and that gives to these 144,000 witnesses. How long, Lord, am I going to have to go through this trial and tribulation? God says, rest in me. How long, Lord, am I, is my marriage going to be going through these trials and tribulations? He says, rest in me. How long, oh Lord, am, am I going to have to wait in my job as I want things to get going and get moving, but yet they're not? What am I going to have to do, Lord? He says, rest in me. How am I going to deal with this situation at my work? He says, rest in me. That's what we're to do, but we don't like to wait. We want to pull up. We want God to be right there like it, we, when it comes to going to McDonald's. Whereas you pull up there to the drive-in and you tell them there, as you look over that menu, you tell them what you want and that you should be able to go quickly right up to the driver's lot, the, the window there, and that they're to give you your spiritual order and you're to be on your way. But God doesn't work that way. Sometimes he says we're to rest in him. And so today I would say to you that if you're going through a hardship, you need to rest in him. What does that mean? It means that we're to draw uh, and, and find comfort in the Lord. We're to get comfort. But so we rest in the Lord and we find comfort in the Lord. You say, how do you do that? Well, we have to understand who God is. God, as we look at this terrible tribulation that these um, new believers are going through as they've been slain for their faith and that there are others who are preaching the gospel continuously, they too will be slain by the Antichrist for their faith. After they are slain, God says that we are to draw comfort from him. How do we do that? Well, the Bible says there that we're to get a robe. That is for those martyrs. We, we learn here that they die, and after they die, they're able to receive as a reward a robe. Well, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 there that we die uh, and that as the dead in Christ rise and that we go to be with the Lord in heaven, we learn in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that our body that is on this earth, that the body goes back to the ground and that the spirit goes to be with the Lord. We are absent from the body and we are present with the Lord. Well, how if we give our life to the Lord how is the body in the grave and yet the spirit is in heaven? How does that spiritual uh, soul, how does it obtain and contain a body or a, a soul? Well, I'm here today to tell you as you look at this passage that you get a temporary body in heaven to be able to hold or wear that robe, those who are these martyred saints. And we learn here that they get a temporary body until the time that God calls us back after the tribulation where we will be united with our earthly body and that we will be there with him in heaven forever and ever. But until that time, this heavenly body is just a temporary body until Jesus Christ calls the tribulation to be over. The vengeance is taking place that the Antichrist, the devil, and all of his descendants are thrown into the lake of fire and that they are destroyed and that those who do not know the Lord, they go before the Lord and they have to experience the mighty wrath of God. And there is no second chances that you and I do not want to be part of that. But my friends, we see here that they who are slayed for the Lord receive great comfort with this white robe. And so we know that they get a special robe for what they do. And God tells us here that there is coming a time that for those that are these martyred saints, that they will be resurrected uh, and that they will have a rapture for themselves. After the tribulation is over, after it is complete, they will have that time of reuniting. As you and I, who have already gone before, we're already up in heaven, they will have that time later in their life. But they get this special robe, and so they can receive the comfort of God. My friends, you need the comfort of God today, and God has it available to you. Just as we know that when the Holy Spirit will still be present here for those tribulation saints, uh, he, His presence is here for you. And it's like that little commercial that I saw, the little girl, the Charmin commercial, as she gets her new rollerblades for the first time, and as she skates, 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 she goes about four steps and she falls down, and she hurts her 
bottom. And as she goes about four more steps, she gets back up and falls down and, and, and hurts herself again. So her solution is that she goes into the bathroom and stuffs her pants full of Charmin tissue because it's cushiony, it's soft, it's wonderful. And then she goes back outside with Charmin hanging out all over her pants that when she falls down, it's okay because she's had that cushion, had that security. My friends, Jesus is like that for you and I, but it's even greater. Jesus tells us in 1 Peter 5, 7, that when we're troubled, he says, cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. He tells us in, in, in the book of Matthew chapter 11, he says, Come unto me all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for you are, he says, For I am gentle and lowly, and you will find rest for your souls, or comfort for you. And so you who are troubled here today, you who are struggling here today, you who have need of answers today, Rest in the comfort of Almighty God. He's much better uh, than Charmin, and you'll never run out of God's wonderful comfort and love like you will toilet paper. Amen. And it's so good to be in the presence of God. And that's what these martyrs, these Christian martyrs, begin to say. They're like, how long, oh Lord? How long are we going to have to wait? God says, you need rest in me. You need to take comfort and me, we see something else here. The promises of the slain that they receive. Again, the promises that the slain receive. What are they? To rest in the Lord, to get comfort uh, in the Lord. And we see one other thing here in verse 11. It says, they were given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. The word there is complete. How long do we have to wait? You have to wait until the, Lord, the Lord's work is completed. The word complete, until it is finished. So we can find rest and God's rest. We can find strength in God's comfort. We can find strength in God's sovereignty because he says complete here. We're waiting on God to complete the task that is, hand, uh, that is at hand. The 144,000 have got to share their faith. They've got to be slain and martyred. And until that number is complete, the end of the tribulation will not happen. It will not be over. And until the gospel gets to the ends of the earth, God will not come back. And that's why we have to go and fulfill the Great Commission during our time. Because we don't know when Christ is coming back. And he tells us that he's coming as a thief in the night. Which means that he could come today if you don't realize it. So you better get your house in order. I got to get mine in order because he could come at any moment. That's why we got to tell our friends and our fellow uh, brothers and sisters about Christ and our neighbors because Jesus tells us in Acts 4.12 that he desires all men to be saved. It's not the good news for just us, but it's for the whole world. So we got our work to do. And so we must lean on the promises of God as we lean on the hearing from the voice of the slain learning of the validity of their um, cause as they gave their life for Christ, we too must be willing to do whatever it takes for the cause of Christ and know that as we have those days, we all have those hard days and we say, oh Lord, how long is it going to be? How long am I going to have to go through this? How long am I going to have to deal with this? God says, rest. God says, wait. God says, find comfort in my strength and wait to the day of completion because there's a better day coming. There's a better day coming when all things will be complete. All things will be known. You and I will be in the presence of Almighty God. The tribulation will be over and the wrath of God will be poured out on Satan and the Antichrist and all his workers and descendants. But until that time, we must understand Satan and Antichrist is trying to trip up anybody that he can because he doesn't want anyone to hear what I have to say or any other preacher of the gospel. He wants you to stay in an illusion and stay in a fog so that you don't come to know Christ so that when Christ comes back that you don't know him. But my friends, today is the day of salvation for you and for me. May we repent, may we get our house in order, and may God be praised. In conclusion today, there was a man named Jim Ritchie who 
as a young boy, from the age of 12, he started having medical problems. I mean, from the age of 12, he, he desired to get married. There was a godly woman that came into his life at the age of 18. He got married to Charlotte. And uh, then he continued to have medical problems. And he suffered and he had agony and suffered and he agony through his 20s, through his 30s, through his 40s. He wanted to have children. They couldn't have children physically. And, and it was a great burden to him. And he continued to have physical problems and ailment. And he had cancer for over 10 years. And he just uh, had over and over trials and tribulations to the point of one t type of cancer that he had that he had boils great boils on his body and that there were different times and different days that there would just be ooze that would come out of it I mean just it just all the time and it was just always oozing and uh, in his 60s and as he got up to 70 uh, years of age he just continued to have these problems and this ooze and if I were Jim Ritchie there would be no day I don't think that I would ever be happy but he's taught me a lesson as I was his pastor uh, many years ago. I said to him as I sat by his, home, his bedside and in the hospital, I said, Jim, how in the world do you do it? You've had cancer. I said, you've had this oozing problem with your skin, these boils. I said, you couldn't have children. You faced debilitating discouragement after discouragement after discouragement. And he said to me, Pastor, he says, I can do it because I'm waiting on the Lord, and every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And he says, every day I live for Christ, I know that there's one day less that I'm going to be on this earth, and one day closer that I'm going to be with Jesus in heaven. So I look forward to being with Christ, so every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Today I share that story to say this. Maybe you're going through trial and hardship and difficulty and hard time and you don't have the answers and you, you're struggling and you just are asking as the Christian martyrs did, Lord, how long am I going to have to go through this? How long am I going to have to deal with this? How long am I going to have to persevere? Rely on God's promises. He says, rest in the Lord. He says, get comfort as you uh, put on the, the robe of Christ Get completeness and learning that you're going to be satisfied in the sovereignty of God and that you know that no matter what, that God's in control and that you may not have the answer, but God does. And every day we live is sweeter than the day before if we know Christ as our Lord and Savior. May you come to know his sweetness as you live for Christ, as you persevere, as you keep striving, because we know we're going to go through a time of difficulty. There's going to be a time of peace. There's going to be a time of war. There's going to be a time of pestilence. There's going to be a time of death. There's going to be a time of martyrdom. There's going to be uh, other uh, seals that we're going to be opening up in the days ahead. But understand that as we go through this time, as we learn that the rapture of the church is coming, the dead in Christ will rise, you and I will be with Christ, and that then those that come before us or come behind us that go through the tribulation, they too will be resurrected, and that we will all be with Jesus in heaven one of these days. And every day with Jesus, my friends, is going to be sweeter than any day we've ever had on this earth. May you taste of God's sweetness today. May you rely on him May you rest in him. May you find comfort in him. May you keep living for him until that day of completion. And may God get the glory for your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for this time together. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us from your word today, Lord, how there's coming a day, a great day of tribulation for those that do not know you. And Lord, you've already selected. There are those who are the 144,000 Jewish preachers and priests, Lord, that are going to come and share the gospel. And Lord, I pray for those who are coming after us, that there will be many millions of people saved and that you'll get the glory. But I pray today for us, as we've heard this message, who have not experienced the rapture yet, that there are believers here today, may we just high five one another and celebrate saying, oh, I can't wait to be with Christ in heaven. But Lord, may we also be burdened because we all have relatives, we have friends, we have neighbors who have never come to hear the gospel. They don't know of the love of Christ that is available to all. God, you've commissioned us to go and to share the gospel with them. Lord, may we not rest in our self-sufficiency, but Lord, 
may we rest in your comfort and your strength as we go forth, as we rely on the Holy Spirit to be our mouthpiece, as we open our mouth in obedience. Lord, may we be, see people saved. May we see this church grow like never before. Lord, may we see miracle after miracle take place as you work in and through us. And God, as the seeds are planted, as the souls are saved, may you get the glory. Lord, there's some here this morning that have never trusted you as Lord and Savior. And through this message today, you've opened their eyes. You've opened their heart. Lord, they need to come and be saved. Lord, as we have this invitation, I pray that you give them the courage to step out of the aisle and come and give their life to you. There's others here today, Lord, that need to repent of their sin. They've just been going through the motions that they've checked off the box, that they know you as Lord and Savior. And they're just like, oh, I just can't wait for the day for Christ to come back. I'm not doing anything else. When they've learned today, Lord, that there's a bigger picture. There's a whole world that needs Jesus. And you've called us to go and to tell. Help us, Lord, to be the prophet's of the day to share the gospel. Lord, I pray for those that want to join this wonderful church. They see that we're a church that as your word tells us in Philippians 4, 13, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's our desire to know Christ and make him known to the world. There are those who are here today that want to come and join this church and join the exciting work that you're doing. Whoever that may be, Lord, may they come. God, as we have this time of invitation, there may be some who are burdened uh, in their marriage or burdened for a lost person. They want to come to the altar and pray. May we respond, Lord. May the walls come down in this place. And Lord, may you get the glory as you speak and as we surrender to you. Lord, we rest in your presence now. Speak to our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to be here at the front. If you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, please come. Let me share with you how you can know Christ. Maybe you're here this morning, you want to come to the altar. You're, you're burdened for those around you. And as you've heard this message today, you realize the responsibility that you and I have as we're the watchmen on the watch. If we don't share that their blood is on our shoulders, as Ezekiel tells us, maybe you want to come to the altar and pray for that. Maybe you want to come and pray for your marriage or pray for a friend or a neighbor. You come, maybe you want to join our church. Whatever decision the Lord's put on your heart today, May you come as God leads. Don't leave here without knowing Christ. Let's stand together as we have our time of invitation. This is my 
Church, we serve a wonderful Savior, do we not? The assurance we have in Christ is something that you can't get anywhere else, amen? As you go out this week, let's be the light in this world. Let's shine brighter than anything else because Christ is in us, amen? Have a great week. We love you. We'll see you back here same time, same place. Have a good one.